Welcome to the chemistry show. And today's topic is about gases and the roles in daily life. Green in the pocket, top rabbit on the stove. Good afternoon, sweet world, and welcome to the chemistry show presented by Gas. I'm your host, David Dragodi, and we have a jam-packed show tonight. As you saw in the title, we're going to be talking about gases and the roles in daily life. Let's not waste any time and jump right into the show. But before we start talking about how gases affect our everyday lives, we need to first understand what a gas really is. More specifically, the definition of a gas. And with this, I'm going to send you over to my good friend on the show who will present to you the definition of a gas, Duffy. Thank you, David. Ah, uh, yes, the, the definition of a gas is an air-like fluid substance which expands freely to fill any space available, irrespective of its quantity. Some examples of gases can include oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. Thank you, Deppy, for that wonderful definition on what a gas is. And now that we know what the definition of a gas is, we can now talk about the gases, their roles in our everyday life. There are two types of gases that play key roles in our everyday life. Not one, two. These gases being natural gas and artificial gas. You all may be wondering, what is the difference between an artificial gas and a natural gas? Well, I'm going to leave that to my good friend Deffy, as he will give the definition of both gases, and this will determine the difference. Take it away, Deffy. So, natural gas is a gas formed in nature, while an artificial gas is gases created by chemical reactions. Thank you once again, Deffy, for your wonderful definitions. I seriously don't know where we would be without you. Now that we know the definition of each type of gas, it is time to introduce the gases that we will, that we will be dealing with on today's show. First off, I'd like to say that we won't be dealing with those common gases like these. We are going to be dealing with these bad boys. At the starting of the week, at some talks you'll hear them speak. With this, let's get right into it and talk about our first gas. At number one, we are going to be talking about three gases which each have similar roles in our daily life. These gases being argon, neon, and xenon. Firstly, let's talk about argon. Argon is presented by the symbol AR and is a natural gas as it is formed alongside with many other gases in nature. Argon is a member of the noble gas family as seen here in the periodic table. Its atomic number is 18 and has an atomic mass of 39.948 AMU, which stands for atomic mass unit. The second of these three gases is neon. Neon is presented by the symbol NE and is also a natural gas. Neon is also a member of the noble gas family. Atomic number is 10, and its atomic mass is 20.18 atomic mass units. Lastly, we have xenon. Xenon is presented by the symbol Xe and is also a natural gas. Xenon itself is also a member of the noble gas family. Its atomic number is 54, and its atomic mass is 131.29 atomic mass units. Now, you may be wondering, what roles do these three gases play in our daily lives? Well, if you can see right above my head, you can see that these gases can help brighten your day. Literally. Let's take a look at some of the examples. Firstly, argon is responsible for the lighting of your house as the gas is present in light bulbs. Neon is mainly responsible for advertising because people use neon signs to reel in their customers. And xenon is responsible for safe driving at night as the gas is present in your headlights. 
How do these gases work, you may ask? Take a look at this video. As you can see in this video, there are small test tubes that each contain a noble gas, such as neon, xenon, argon, helium, and krypton. When the noble gas comes in contact with electricity, in this case the Tesla coil, it excites the gas inside, thus removing an electron. With this, a bright light is formed. Lastly, we will be talking about hydrofluorocarbons, also known as HFCs. HFCs are artificial gases. They come from the manufacturing of, leakage from, and disposal of refrigerators. Some products that use HFCs can include refrigerators and also fire extinguishers. Now you may be thinking, how do HFCs work? In a refrigerator, the HFCs are cooled through a coil, turning the HFC into a liquid. When the HFC turns into a liquid, the HFC absorbs the heat, cooling the refrigerator. In a fire extinguisher, the HFCs are used to disrupt oxygen and hydrogen chains, thus putting out the fire. Remember folks, gases are the key to our lives. Without them, society would be a whole different place. and Everyone's lifestyle would be completely different. Not only will society be affected, chemistry itself would be affected as we would be missing a big chunk of the periodic table and many experiences, experiments that we normally would be able to conduct will not be conductible. We need gases in our life, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not take advantage of them, even though they're not that known. Come on, everyone. Well, folks, that is all the time we have for today's show. If you have any suggestions on what we should cover next time, email us at gaschemistry at gas.ca or tweet at us, we do read your tweets at Gas Chemistry. And on behalf of everyone here on Gas, good night. And remember, gases can enlighten the future. Literally. Greeted the pocket top, rob it on the stove. Ah!